Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and today I thought I would go through a list of fighting game 101 terms that I feel like everyone should know, no matter what kind of game it is. Because I get a lot of questions in um, like my comments asking like, oh, what do you mean when you say this? What does this mean? Like you're just saying random things. So I'll timestamp all of the, the terms that I'm going to go over uh, in the description and in the comments. And yeah, so we're going to start off with like the most basic one. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what combos are. First term is combos. Obviously, it's just a string of moves that you link together by some form of cancels in order to cash out on damage or some other kind of advantage, but usually by damage. Something that's similar to combos is what we call pressure, and that is when the opponent is guarding, and it's almost like you're doing a combo on their guard. So, basically anything that happens on guard is some kind of form of pressure. Um, I'm just going to turn his guard gauge onto no guard break. So, anything that you do on guard is considered pressure. And when you're doing pressure, which is, you know, attacking the opponent while they're guarding, you want to make sure you're mixing it up, because there's a lot of ways you can punish your opponent in this game. Like, if I put the um, AI on to do his target combo, you can't just mindlessly do things on pressure or else you'll get punished for it. See, like, if he does his attack string... Oops, what? <laughs> If he does his attack string and he thinks he can just pressure me by, like, pressing things... Oh my goodness, what? Is that a good tracking now? Oops. See, there are gaps in strings and you can't just randomly throw stuff out because your opponent may punish you if they know exactly what you're gonna do. So you have to make sure you're being unpredictable or just making sure your pressure is really, um, decent and really actually real. So when I say that and you want to make it real and decent, I mean that there's not any gaps in your strings in what you're doing. So obviously there's going to be a huge gap in Mirio's third and fourth hit there. See how he has like that massive reel back? The opponent can totally sidestep or put an attack in that gap there. So that is a super, super big hole in his attack. And so you're not really going to be doing this whole attack string. So usually if you do this, you might want to cancel it into something else that's maybe a little bit faster. Something like that, like something like this that might not give them as much of a chance to sidestep out of. Or maybe if you want to be tricky, you know, you can even go for mix-ups off of your pressure. And just, you want to be doing things that the opponent is not respecting, and then you can keep, like, honestly in this game, you can keep pressure going for a long time, especially since you can dash cancel at any, any stage for one meter. So you, this all there, that is considered pressure. Any long string of things and your opponent keeps blocking them, if your opponent's blocking, that is all pressure. So that... And there's a lot, as I said, there's a lot of pressure sequence in this, in this game because you can basically dash cancel anything and then keep your pressure going if your opponent is blocking. And obviously there are a lot of gaps in things where your opponent could interrupt you. Like for Mirio, he actually has a gap in between the first and second hit of his attack string. But usually people don't abuse that too much, so usually you're safe to go in for some buttons. But you know, just keep that in mind. And so yeah, pressure, you can do anything. You can even do like things like cancels and you know, trick your opponent into thinking that you're gonna do the uppercut and then you don't, and then you get to go in for more attacks. And you can even do things like staggers. So instead of like doing the whole string, I just do one punch and then go in for the whole string. And then maybe if they predict that I'm just gonna do the one punch, then I'll actually do the whole string and then they'll get hit by the second part of the string. So, you know, I keep doing the one hit. And you know, maybe I do one, then I do two. And they like think I'm just gonna constantly do one hit. And they're like, okay, I'm just gonna interrupt him the next time. And then I actually do the full string. They might get hit by the string that comes up after that. And then I actually get a full combo from it. So the point is to just really keep your opponent on their toes, even when they're guarding, and not just let them feel like they're safe when they're guarding. And you need to really make sure you're mixing up what you're actually attacking. Don't just go in for red attacks, because that's pretty obvious. Like, if I did that, that's kind of obvious. Something a bit sneaky I like to do with Mirio is maybe do the yellow attack, and then cancel the first hit of the yellow attack into the red move, and that actually works surprisingly often. But yeah, things like that, where you're just keeping your opponent blocking, and making them not know, like, when they can actually attack. So, like, you know... Maybe you can even do a dash cancel into a red attack, because they, you know, if you do this into a dash cancel, they think you're gonna, you know, dash cancel into an attack. Oops, I don't have any meter. If they think you're gonna do this and you dash cancel, most people would do an attack after that. Then maybe if you want to be sneaky, you can do a dash cancel, land on the ground and do a red attack and catch the opponent off guard that way, and then get a combo going. So, basically, yeah, pressure is just anything on guard, and there's a lot of interesting ways you can do it. You can do a lot of things to mix your opponent up, or you can just make them not know how you're going to attack, or when you're going to attack, and it can keep you safe, and open your opponent up. So, 
It's something you really want to make sure you're doing well. Okay, so the next term is something that I mentioned quite a lot there in the pressure segment, and it has to do with, it's called mix-ups. And that's just basically mixing up your opponent. Usually it has to do with red attacks or like unblockables. Um, it's particularly in this game since, you know, there's no like crossovers or like mix-ups in any other way. There's no like low high overhead stuff. So the only thing that you're getting mixed up with is like whether it's going to be a normal attack or a red attack. Or maybe whether it's going to be a sidesteppable attack like the end of my attack string or a non-sidesteppable attack like this yellow here or like this quote too. So basically when you're mixing your opponent up, you're just trying to like make them, you're trying to predict what they're going to do. And if I think Bakugo is just going to stand there and block my whole string, I'll go for this red attack and maybe he'll get hit by it. Or maybe if I know he's going to sidestep th this string, I know he's going to like do doom, 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 and then sidestep. I can just leave it, let him sidestep and then try and punish his sidestep that way and actually not do anything. So that is the essence of a mix-up. It's just like has to do with 50-50s. That's another term to do with mix-ups. A 50-50 is, is when it's a guess either way, so it, it's a, you know, it's one or the other. It's an attack or it's a red attack. Like, you just have to guess either way, and if you guess wrong, you lose. And yeah, mix-ups aren't very complicated, they're just something you want- usually they're unsafe though. Like, a lot of red- oops, I didn't mean to do that. A lot of red attacks are quite unsafe, so you don't want to be throwing them out all the time. But, you know, you want to make sure you're throwing them out to keep your opponent on their toes and make sure that they can't just stand there all willy-nilly thinking you're just going to do, like, basic stuff. Because you need to make them fear you <laughs> and be scared of your mix-ups. So yeah, that's mix-ups. Okay, then, kind of stemming from mix-ups, we have the term reads. And reads are basically just, like, the opposite of a mix-up. It's predicting that your opponent is going to do something. So if I make the read that he's going to sidestep here, that's, that's what it is. I make the read, and like he sidesteps. Oh, hello. I make the read that he sidesteps, and maybe I punish his sidestep. Or maybe if I'm doing something like, you know, combos. If I make the read that they're gonna recover, I can, you know, do some kind of recovery reset. Mirio doesn't have very great ones, but, you know, like there. I made the read that he was gonna do a recovery, and then chase him down for his recovery, and punish him for it. Um, but obviously, if, if he didn't recover, then I wouldn't get any of the benefits, and then my read was pointless because I made the wrong read. So reading is just like, it's it comes from like saying that you read your opponent like a book. So you have to read what they're gonna do, like you know, read them like a book. You predicted it, and so just be like so night eye and know exactly what they're gonna do, and then that is a read. Okay, and then also similar to reads is the term footsies, and well they're not similar, but they're used um very close to each other. So, because reads are used a lot when you're in footsies. So footsies is not so much a big deal in a game like My Hero Wants Justice, where, like, there's auto-tracking, like, moves that, like, fling you all the way across the screen. Like, my regular attack will launch me all the way from over here. So there's not too much footsies, but it's still something worthwhile to mention. And so, I'll say what it is. Footsies is the art of moving yourself around in order to get some kind of advantage. So maybe if I'm, you know, running around and I pretend like I'm gonna run in on Bakugo, I'm, you know, charging at him, and then pretend he goes to do a target combo. He's probably not going to do it instantly. And then I, I'm charging up, and then I actually side jump, just like I did there. I actually run out of the way, way right before he actually attacks, and then I get to punish his attack. Because um, I made it seem like I was going to attack, so he wants to do something. Or maybe he would do a yellow attack. Um, oh, where is that? Unlockable, oh yeah, counter-attack. So maybe, you know, I run around, I'm running around, and then I charge at him, and then he thinks I'm gonna run in and press the button, you know, by, like, doing this, and they want to counter your, like, charge in attack by doing a counter-attack, so you make it look like you're running in, but then you actually sidestep out of the way, and then you get to punish their counter-attack. That is basically the art of footsies, and just moving around, and moving yourself in positioning that, like, you know, is advantageous for you. Maybe it means you'll get a punish, maybe it means you'll avoid a punish from the opponent, or just, you know, keep yourself safe on something, like maybe I do this and then sidestep out of the way, and then, yeah. So all that stuff where you're moving yourself around in, like, interesting ways, that's all footsies. Okay, the next term is a really big one that I think is really important, and a lot of people don't know what it is, and it's neutral. And neutral is a really important part of fighting games, and as I said, not a lot of people actually really understand what it actually means. So neutral is the term used when 
basically exactly what's happening now. When nothing is actually happening, it's not when I'm attacking the opponent and like in a combo or even attacking them on block. It's only when like no one has a direct advantage over the other player that is neutral. So if I'm over here and we're just like running around, and this happens a lot in My Hero Wants Justice, when you're just running around so seeing who's gonna press a button or seeing who's gonna press a special move or something, it's like basically just like sussing each other out and seeing who's gonna make the first move, that is neutral. Anytime when like no one's like even like explicitly zoning and like throwing all this stuff out, and you know, just doing a ton of special moves, um, that is neutral. So when I'm just running around trying to make my read on my opponent and we're just like nothing's happening and we're just in like the completely like blank slate no one's doing anything we're just like trying to play the patient game and see like who makes who makes a move and make a read on what the opponent's gonna do that's all neutral and so it all has to do with controlling the space so you don't want to like if you're trying to play neutral well you don't want to just run straight in on your opponent because you know runs are actually kind of punishable in this game because you can't block until it's like completely over and sometimes you have to wait a bit but, um, or you know, they might just press a button, so you don't want to be like running past your opponent, like right to them. You also don't want to be running away, like if you're a rush down character like Mirio, like there's no point in running away. So you want to be just like keeping like a distance of your opponent where you feel like you have the advantage. So if I'm against someone like Kami, who has an extremely fast um, base attack, but it doesn't reach very far, I'm going to want to be around this distance where she can't really reach me with an attack, but I can if I press a button. So maybe if she like, thinks we're in distance, and then I take one step back, her thing will actually miss, and then I will actually get the punish on her. So, I'll just pretend, like, it doesn't really work with AI, because they run up. But, like, if we're in this distance, and then they think they can attack, and then I move, like, sli slightly back, yeah, it's not really gonna work. But, like, say Kami, because, you know, her, like, regular attack only reaches about this distance. So if I'm walking around here, and I think she's gonna press a button, and I take a little step backwards, she's gonna miss, and then I can punish her. That is what we call playing neutral well. It's when you're controlling the space, the co controlling the space between your own opponent in order to have, um, an advantage, and in order to do well. And terms like neutral breakers, or auto-neutral, are things that kind of, like, bypass the whole neutral game. So, an example of that is Mirio's Tilt Quirk 1, because when you're in this neutral stage, you know, no one really has an advantage. You don't want to press the button because, you know, buttons are very unsafe, and you don't have any projectiles to throw. And so I can just completely bypass neutral and just do this, because it's a tracking move that launches me all the way to the where the opponent is, no matter where I am. So that is what we call an auto-neutral, or a breaking neutral, because it just has no regard for, like, having, like, the mind games of what we're going to do, because you can just do it, and you hit the opponent. And it's a, an example of a reasonably, like, quite powerful neutral breaker. Because, like, in this game, neutral breakers are really powerful because you can just dash cancel them and they become completely safe. In other games, usually they are very unsafe. But in this game, because, you know, you can dash cancel anything to keep anything safe, uh, it's very hard to punish it. Like, even if they do tr think they can punish that, you're going for a yellow attack and, yeah. You, you do, don't punish neutral breakers in this game, so they're a very powerful thing, especially since a lot of people really don't like those mind games and like the, playing the patient game around this distance. So things like neutral breakers are very powerful, and Mirio has quite a few. Like this, I guess, could be considered his quirk one could be considered neutral breaker because he kind of just bypasses any of these mindsets, and anything just like that launches yourself at the opponent or just like completely like ignores the like spacing game is a neutral breaker. Like even if I cancel it, that's n breaking the neutral because it just throws me right in their face and then I can go in for the close-up game that I want to play. Because, you know, Miro doesn't really want to play play the neutral game too much. He wants to be up in your face, like mixing you up, doing yellow attacks and counters and all sorts of things. So yeah, that's the basics of what neutral is. And in neutral, the two things that like people, that characters, archetypes like to do from neutral, they either like to um, outspace people, like Mirio has very long-reaching moves. Maybe they just want to retreat to neutral and throw out projectiles. Like, you know, characters like Toga obviously will want to do that. Um, and there's some characters that want to use neutral and maybe just want to bypass neutral or want to use, um, in their neutral, they will want to be getting in on you. So a character that is a brawler, like Rapa, or, you know, any of the other brawlers, like Muscula or even Mirio, are characters that want to be, when they're in neutral, they want to be trying their hardest to get in on the opponent. And that can be really hard when maybe a, your opponent 
is someone that wants to get away when they're in a neutral. So if you're a rapper against Toga, the Toga's probably going to be running away while you're trying to get in, and you have a, a cat and mouse neutral, as we call it. <laughs> but anyways, that's the basics of neutral. Let's move on to the next term. So two terms I kind of mentioned in the neutral segment are rushdown and zoning, and they're pretty frequent terms, so I imagine you know what they mean. Rushdown is a character archetype where the character um, excels at being really close to the opponent, um, mixing the opponent up, doing pressure, doing lots of damage, and just being really good at close up. Um, Mirio, I wouldn't say, is um, an exact rushdown. Another word for rushdown is like brawler. A brawler character is a rushdown character. Um, characters that I would say are rushdown are obviously Rapa, um, maybe muscular. Like characters that like don't have anything to do except just being in your face and doing pressure, getting big damage, and mixing you up, and that kind of stuff. So yeah. That is a rushdown characters, ones that never like to be far away. And the opposite, um, like zoning characters or um, keep away characters, so zoning and keep away, characters that like to maintain quite a distance in between you and the opponent because they have a, a lot of advantage with projectiles. So an example obviously would be Toga, but you know, even characters like Nezure or Mina have a lot of things they can do from a distance, so they want to be making, they want to kind of like be running away from you so they can set up, you know, set up projectiles. Maybe if they have some slow projectiles, they want to set those up with a lot of distance because they don't want to get punished for them. They might want to set up the wall like Mina does, set up some puddles, set up some traps. Like, you know, so anyone that likes to run away and like do attacks from afar in order to get the advantage is what we would call a zona or a keep away character. Okay, and on the note of zoning, I just want to clarify the term spam and zoning are actually different. So zoning is when you are throwing projectiles in a strategic manner. So when you're throwing projectiles, um, not just over and over again, but you're throwing them explicitly to get some certain advantage over the opponent, maybe you throw a really slow projectile, and then while that projectile, like, an example is Nezure's, like, blasts. They're pretty slow, so maybe you can run up behind them and even get a combo off of them, or get some pressure off of them. So that is classified as zoning. When you're throwing out projectiles with an actual plan and doing something behind it, or maybe you're throwing out projectiles um, so they have some time to charge something up. Like uh, Momo, sometimes you'll throw out the Madryoshka dolls that, like, blow up so that she can charge up some of her, like, her shield, or charge up her cannon. And so zoning, when you're actually doing something for a like a purpose and like doing it strategically and throwing out the right things at the right time is what is zoning. An example of that would be Darby. He, his character archetype is based around zoning. He has to throw the right projectiles at the right time um, or else he'll be punishable in most, like if he does the, the wrong option. So when you really have to think about it, that is what zoning is. Spam, on the other hand, is when you're doing one move, or maybe two moves, but usually just one move all over, all over again. And it doesn't even have to be projectiles, but generally it is because people get triggered by projectiles. But like, even this is an example of zoning. When I'm just doing the same move over and over again, because it worked once, so I'm just gonna keep doing it all over again, and there's just nothing you can do about it, because I'll just keep doing this. Because, you know, it worked once, so I'm just gonna constantly do it. And that's, <laughs> unfortunately, a very online player mindset, and people do it a lot. But, um, yeah, it sucks, and it's, it is different from zoning, because spamming is just doing stuff with no rhyme or reason. You just did it because you think it's good, and you're a bad player, so you just want to abuse broken stuff in order to win. An example of things that use, are used for spam are Toga's projectiles, is when they just go, like, knives into needles, knives into needles, knives into needles. Constantly, over and over again, with no strategy, that is spamming. Uh, Todorokis that just jump in the air and throw fireballs all the time and then run away with the ice, that is spamming. If you do nothing else but one, uh, like one or two moves, that is considered spamming. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so frame data is something that if you're an anime, anime only, an anime only, oh my god, anime fighter only player, you may not know exactly what frame data is, because a lot of, um, like, arena fighter or anime fighters don't actually give you frame data, but it's still something that exists, and it's still something you should know about, so that you know, you know what I'm talking about. So frame data is concepts that we use to explain the properties of different moves. And there's three types of like frame data, or three types of frames that we talk about. So there's activation frames, 
Um, or there's startup frames, active frames, and recovery frames. And what do all these refer to? Okay, so startup frames are referring to how long it takes a move to start the actual hit of the move. So something that has very quick startup frames would be a regular punch. It starts up very quick, maybe it's about 9 frames. Oh, also, a frame is how many frames of the game there actually is, and that's what the term frame is. So like if it's a 60 frames per second game, and there's a move that starts up in 10 frames, it's going to be a tenth of a second. <laughs> so, yeah. Obviously, we don't have exact frame data, like, numbers in this game, but you can see that something like Mirio's Regular Punch has very few startup frames, so it starts up very quickly. So it has a very small number of frames it needs before you actually hit the opponent. But if I do something like his Tilt Work 1, you can see after I activate the move, there is actually, like, quite a long time. You can see there's a long time before I actually do the move. So, like, now, then he hits him. Unlike here, when I go, now, hit. And it's, like, see? So... Startup frames is just how long it takes after you press the input for a move for it to actually hurt the opponent. Something else with a really slow activation, or slow startup frames, or a lot of startup frames, is this Tilt Quirk 2, because it takes a long time before he actually hits them. And actually, regular attacks have varying startup frames, because if I do it from a distance, it actually has very long startup frames, because he does this whole lunge thing from all the way over here before he hits the opponent. So yeah, startup frames, like, this is actually reasonably fast. Startup frames, it happens surprisingly quickly. This is, you know, you know, about medium, but, you know, something like this is quite slow. And if I'm all the way over here, that's a lot of startup frames as well. So a lot of startup frames means that something is a lot more reactable, it's a lot slower, you can see it coming. And, uh, yeah. So now, active frames are a bit more complicated. It has to do with how active the hitbox of your move actually is. So when I do my punch, how how long is the hitbox actually active? Like, can the opponent run into the hitbox of my punch? Like, does it stay there for a while? Does the, is the punch able to hit the opponent after I do the punch? No. So regular attacks like this have very small active frames. It'll probably only be the exact moment that he actually does that launch forward with his hand it would probably be the only active frame. It might only have one active frame. An example of moves that have a lot of active frames would be projectiles. Because as you can see, no matter that whole time that the, the move was on the screen, so like, you know, a whole second of her things on the screen, that these have a hitbox and they can hit the opponent. So that's a very long active frames because they're active and able to hit the opponent for a very long time. Unlike this punch, who's only able to hit the opponent the second that he actually does that launch thingy. Like a move like this, um, has very short active frames as well, because it would only hit the opponent the second that he does that. A move with um, kind of intermediate active frames, so like moderate active frames, would be something like this punch, where he lunges him himself forwards, because that whole like duration when he's doing the punch is actually active. So if I do it right in front of the face, it'll hit the opponent as soon as he starts doing the punch. So he launches himself and does the punch, and it'll hit them very soon. But if I do it from over here, he has to do, like, he's doing the punch, and he's flying a bit, and hits them a little bit later than it hit him than if I did it right here. So this has moderate active frames because that hitbox is actually active the whole time he's doing the punch. So that is something with slightly longer active frames than my regular punch. I don't know if that sounds a bit weird to say, but yeah, and active frames is just like how long something's active, like able to hit the opponent for. So like an example of something with a ton would be Endeavor's Flamethrower, and something with barely any is a regular punch. And recovery frames? Uh, just have to do with how unsafe something is. So, surprisingly, actually punches kind of have quite a bit of recovery frames. Like, if I do more than one hit, I might have quite a lot of recovery on my move. So if I do this, there was a lot of time before I can actually hold a guard button here. I'll do a move that has that's a little bit more obvious, like my Tilt Quirk 2. If I do my Tilt Quirk 2, I'm holding down the guard button right now, and see how long I have to wait, even after he does the attack. So he does the attack now, and then he blocks. So even after he does the attack, I have to wait a very long time before I can actually block or do anything else. I can't sidestep, I can't attack, I can't even dash cancel it if I miss it. So that is what we refer to as something with a lot of recovery frames. There's a lot of time after I actually do the move where I just can't do anything and the opponent can punish me. Something with less recovery frames is my regular punch, because you can see almost right after I do the punch, I can sidestep and, you know, I can get out of the way and not get punished for it. So you can see almost right after I do the punch, I can sidestep afterwards, so there's very few recovery frames. It's only that like split second before I can sidestep where I'm recovering. Um, something with a lot of unfortunate recovery frames now, if I don't cancel it, 
is Mirio's tilt quirk one. So I can do, I'm doing everything here. I'm pressing buttons. I'm doing a sidestep. Oh, oops. And I can't do anything, even on hit, until I land on the ground. So that's an example of something with a lot of recovery frames. Because all of those frames where I'm like landing to the ground is me recovering. All that time, I can't do anything until I land on the ground. Um, but in this game, you can actually, <laughs> a lot of the time, cancel your recovery frames. Going back to the term cancel we were talking about before. By using a dash cancel. And instead of having all of this time of recovery where I have to fall to the ground, I can just cancel that. Oops. I can just cancel that. Oh. Can you guard break, please? I can just cancel that and go in for more attacks with my dash cancel. So I can spend some meter to cancel the recovery of the move if they block it and go in for a combo. And that also applies for like a move like this. So even on hit, this move has a lot of recovery frames because even as I'm, you know, I'm trying to press other buttons are here, but I still have to wait so long before I can actually do anything. So that's a lot of recovery, but I can actually cancel all of those recovery frames by using my dash cancel, and that way I can go in for combos. And that's how combo system works. Combo systems work in fighting games. So uh, yeah, those are the three types of frames. Let's move on to the next term. Okay, so the next term um, is cancels. And in this game, there's actually quite a few different types of cancels, like that act in very different ways. So the most obvious one that you may not actually know is called a cancel is an attack cancel, and that's just when you cancel any kind of attack into another attack. So as you can see here, my regular attack string can be cancelled into my yellow attack. It can actually be, ca be cancelled into any of my quirk buttons. It cancels my quirk 1, tilt quirk 1, quirk 2, and tilt quirk 2. So it is a very cancelable move, because you can cancel it into anything. And what I mean by cancel is I'm cancelling the recovery frames. Frames is something I'm going to talk about after this term, but basically, you're just cutting off the end portion of a move and replacing it with an actual move so that they link together. Um, so an example of something that can't be cancelled is like Mirio's Tilt Work 1. I cannot cancel this into any other buttons by default. I can't do anything um, off of it except for one specific type of cancel, so it is considered uncancelable into buttons. Most moves in this game are, for some reason, cancelable into anything, like even yellow attacks. I can cancel my yellow attack on block or on hit. I can cancel it into a quirk button. So that is another form of cancel, because, you know, this is an uncancelled yellow attack, because I just let the whole animation go out and he does the stand there and then walks around. But if I can cancel the end part and go into a right another attack, that is a cancel. Another type of cancel is a dash cancel, which I'm sure you know what that is. And that works in the same way as cancelling into a different button, except you're cancelling into a dash. And they can be performed off of a lot more things than regular cancels, so, you know, I can't cancel anything off of my Tilquark 1. I can't cancel any buttons or any other Tilquark buttons, but I can cancel a dash off of it. Which is handy, because it actually gives me a combo if I do that. So, that's useful. So I'm cancelling the recovery frames, because usually this move, I can do anything, but nope, I just have to fall to the ground before I can do anything. I have to cancel the recovery frames, and cancel the ending of the move with my dash, in, it, or in order to get something afterwards. Another example of this is his Tilt Quirk 2. I can't get anything off of it unless I dash cancel and cancel the recovery frames so that I can charge up on the opponent with my dash and hit them with some other attacks. Um, obviously dash cancels in this game, they cost one bar of plus ultra meter. One bar, I'm meaning like one letter, not a whole like plus ultra thing. Um, so yes, keep it on mind, in mind. On block and on hit, you can cancel almost anything. Like, it's pretty crazy how you can cancel basically everything. There are only a few moves that can't be cancelled. And uh, it'll cost you one bar of plus ultra meter. Another kind of cancel is a guard cancel. And that's just when you do the the action for a uh, counterattack, like Mirio's this. Uh, but you do it while you're blocking. And if you do it while you're blocking, you basically just cancel your opponent. Like, you're cancelling while you're guarding, it's called a guard cancel, so I guess you're cancelling your guard and you're cancelling what the opponent's doing, and you just launch them away and you reset to neutral, which is one of the terms we learned earlier in this video. So when you do a guard cancel, you're cancelling what your opponent does and resetting to neutral, when no one has a direct advantage, you haven't dealt any damage, you're not getting a combo, you're back to neutral, and you're waiting to see who's actually gonna get the next hit, and who's gonna make the next right decision, and in this instance it was actually Bakugo, even though he's an AI. <laughs> But yeah, that's what a guard cancel is, and the last type of cancel is just a cancel cancel, where you just cancel a move. So an example is Mirio's Tilt Quirk 1, where he can just cancel the recovery frames, I mean cancel the actual uppercut, 
So instead of doing the uppercut, he can just hold down the block button and he actually cancels the move and doesn't actually do the whole hit. There's not too many of these in the game. I can only think of Ida as one other, but I'm sure there's a few others. But uh, yeah, that's also a cancel, but it's just called a cancel because you're just canceling. Man, I've said cancel too many times and now it sounds weird. Okay, so the next term is meter management. And it kind of links into the cancels as we were talking about before, because in order to dash cancel, it costs one bar of your plus ultra meter. And in order to have good meter management, you need to make sure you're not willy-nilly throwing away your plus ultra meter. So meter management just purely refers to controlling the amount of all kinds of meter you have at a certain point. So that includes your, if I turn off my guard gauge to normal, so that includes making sure, you know, you're regulating your guard gauge, making not you're sure you're not just standing there blocking while the opponent attacks you. Because then, oh my god, oops. Because <laughs> then obviously you're going to lose a lot of your guard meter very quickly. So that's poor meter management if you're just standing there um, blocking. Because, you know, you're going to die for it. Another form of meter management is obviously to do with your plus ultra gauge. And it just refers to making sure you're not just like doing this. Because even though you might get a bit of damage from doing stuff like this, <laughs> I got barely any damage, but like, you know, if, if I did a little bit more of a damaging combo, you don't really want to be throwing out all your meter in one combo a lot of the time, because then what are you going to do next time you get a hit? Like, you're going to get no damage because you've used up all of your meter. You're not going to be able to get a combo if you used up all of your dash cancels in one turn. And it's surprising how many times I see people do this online. They just use, like, everything in one combo. And then they get a hit on me again, and then they just can't do anything. They just have to do like this and get like a teensy bit of damage. So that's the reason a lot of the time I like to only do one dash cancel in my combos. Maybe two if I want to cash out. But usually I like to save my, you know, save my meter and make sure I'm only spending around one bar of meter so that I'm not um, losing more than I'm gaining in the match. And so it also just has to like be like looking at how much meter you have, knowing when you could be able to throw out a plus ultra, like maybe knowing like, oh, after I hit this combo, I'll have a plus ultra. So maybe um, once the opponent gets meter blown, oops, you know, I meter blow the opponent with my tilt on uh, my quirk two, they're gonna get launched to the ground. And maybe if I have a plus ultra, I can, you know, catch them on their recovery or something. And so yeah, I mean, that's basically what it is. It's just like keeping an eye on your meter and strategically spending meter at the right times so that you have meter for when you need it. It also is in regards to sidekicks. Um, so, you know, like if someone's attacking you and then I call out my sidekick and it uses up all of the meter, that's something I want to keep in mind. If I try to break the, their combo with my sidekick, they're going to be gone for a long time because unlike when I call Tamaki up here and it only uses half, oops, when I call Nejere after I'm being attacked, it uses all of her meter and it's going to take ages for her to come back. And that means I'm not going to be able to call her out in neutral as much, I'm not going to be able to use her projectiles to help my combos, I'm not going to be able to use her projectiles to, you know, um, you know, just help me in neutral and have a bit more of an advantage from a distance. So see, Tamaki came back way faster because I didn't use him to break a combo there. So that's just another thing to keep in mind in regards to meter management. The next term is scaling. And scaling is just something that's in all fighting games, and it has to do with how attacks do less damage when they're sequenced after other attacks, if that makes any sense. So if we take, for example, this Quirk, quirk One Punch does 4,000 damage. If I do it completely raw, like I haven't done anything, I just run around and then do this, it'll do 4,000 damage. But if I do it in a combo, even after just a few hits of my attack string, you can see that the white number there is the number of my most, is the damage of my most recent hit. It only does 3,200 damage, and that means the damage has been scaled. So basically anything in a combo is going to scale your damage and lower the damage, particularly special, um, quirk moves and tilt attacks, or um, uh, counter attacks, will scale your damage quite a lot. So see this combo where I've done a bunch of quirk moves and tilt attacks. Oops, my goodness. You can see that the quirk one actually only did 1000 damage there. And the point of scaling is just that so you don't have like 100% combos that kill your opponent with every hit. Because if that didn't happen, that com if there wasn't scaling, that combo of mine probably would have done about 100%. Because, you know, add on the 4000 to this. 3,000, to this 2,000, 
So there's 3,000, and then add a bunch more of them. Like, that's going to do a lot of damage. So, uh, yeah. It's basically just stop you from having ridiculously overpowered combos. And it's good to, um, when you're in trading mode, to test what scales things uh, more and what scales them less. So typically, regular attack strings will scale things less than quirk buttons. So see there, after I did the attack string, it still did 3,000 damage. But if I do, like, after yellow attack... Oh, uh, wait, that doesn't really work, does it? If I do after my ground yellow attack, see it actually only does 2,500 damage. So you can see that after my tilt attack, it's actually scaling the damage of my quirk one a lot more than the regular attack string was. So yeah, it's good to test how what scales what and to what extent. So when you're like you know building combos and trying to get the most damage, sometimes it's beneficial to actually leave a move out. Like some characters, you don't want to do a tilt attack in the combos because they scale the damage so much that it actually makes them do less damage. Mirio is not the case. But there's a lot of characters like that. Um, also, a quick note on scaling is for some reason in this game, scaling happens even when it's not in a combo. So like if I can do a few projectiles here, these projectiles actually count as being in my combo. And as you can see here, my combo is doing a lot less damage than it was before because all of these moves that have hit before it, so like even these punches, like it's not in the same combo, but they're doing less and less damage because the game considers it a combo because the opponent's still standing. And they they did this because they're wanting to avoid, um, like, 100% resets, but they made it kind of weird, so it counts like everything is a combo until you wait, like, five seconds afterwards. And then you'll get your full damage again. Like, see, I had to wait all that time for the scaling to reset. So yeah, that's what scaling is. Uh, the next term is tracking, and I'm pretty sure you know what this means. It just It's just, like, the, the a move's ability to turn and track to where the opponent is. Something, an example of something with not very good tracking would be, here, let me put him on dash. Actually, Mirio's regular attack is really good tracking, doesn't it? Um, what doesn't have very good tracking? Mirio has very good tracking overall. So, so you can see kind of his quirk one doesn't have amazing tracking. And what I mean by tracking is it doesn't keep tracking down the opponent, like, throughout the duration of the move. It does go towards the opponent. Oh my god, Bakugo, we were so loud. But... Even like when he's running around, it doesn't turn with the opponent. So once he does it, and it, he like, I do the move, um, and, you know, it doesn't turn away that much. Mirio has actually quite good tracking. And ex an example of a move with crazy tracking is his red attack. Like, I can do this almost whenever, and no matter when the opponent sidesteps, it's not like it has to be the second before, not the second, like the frame before I do the red move, it'll miss. So, what did I even just say? I mean that this red attack has crazy tracking. See right there, Bakugo sidestepped right before the move came out and he still got hit because the move tracked him. See, he sidestepped but it still hit him. Usually red moves go in a straight distance. There we go, that was an example of um, it didn't track exactly because he like sidestepped the f like second before it hit, but, like the frame before it hit. But even there, if you miss time it slightly, the tracking will get to you. Um, an example of a move with less tracking is like Nezure's projectiles because as you can see they don't like arc towards the opponent. But a move like Nezure, um, oh my god, what is her name? Toga's Needles, you know, when she throws a needle, so quirk one. Um, they actually have tracking, and a lot of people are really annoyed by the tracking, because you can be, like, running around, and they will, like, curve towards you and, like, still track you down, even if you're running sideways and, like, hit you a lot of the time, which can be really annoying. <laughs> so yeah, that's what tracking is. Okay, and next we have the two terms, Wake Up and Recovery. They are kind of similar in this game, but um, a lot of people don't actually really understand what wake-ups are in this game. So if I get Bakugo to do a target combo on me, please, I can do a recovery by moving my movement stick or pressing the jump button. And we all know what a recovery is, like, you know, you do the flip into the air, it does a blue flash, and you can attack, like, almost instantly afterwards. So it gets you straight back in the battle, and, you know, you can choose which direction you recover in, and it stops the opponent getting infinite combos, because, you know, you have the brief invisibility for, uh, invincibility when you like flash blue there so the opponent can't hit you for a brief moment there. And you know, it stops characters getting like infinite combos in the air and because you know, when you launch them in the air and then they fall down and then you can't just combo them again because they can recover. So it stops infinite combos and also you want to do it sometimes like if you just want to get straight back into the action and attack him really quick, I can just pop up and attack him before he really expects me to. The other kind of wake up in this game or I guess it's not called a wake up, but yeah. So there's wake ups and recoveries. Recovery is when you, you know, move your stick and you like jump, it does a blue flash and you jump in the air. But your other option you have is just to take a hard knockdown and take the wake up. 
and when you do a wake up, you accept the hard dock down, you don't press anything, and your opponent just goes splat, I mean you, your body just goes splat onto the ground, and you turn white for a little bit, you get a bit of a white glow, that white glow is actually invincibility. Um, and it's also a very good tool for slowing down the pace of the game. So Seabark would go here, like, if he's, you know, really doing a lot of pressure, maybe he's Rapa or someone that, like, really loves rushing down the opponent and, like, doing a lot of attacks. You can see there that I, like, really slow down the pace of the game when I do something like that, because, like, I'm not up in their face instantly. I even have some invincibility frames as I stand up, so I'm, like, completely invincible while I'm d on those white frames. So actually, there, there. I can actually stand up and press buttons before the opponent can actually hit me. So it's actually a very strong way of getting up and uh, or like getting in on your opponent. It's like, you know, if you're kind of scared of their offense and stuff and you want to be a bit safer on wake up, I would take the hard knockdown, take your invincibility and just wake up with buttons or wake up with a sidestep while you're invincible or even wake up with a yellow attack or just anything that you think will catch your opponent and just, you know, make it a bit more likely to, you know, get something. So. Yeah, it's pretty simple. There's only two types of wake-ups in this game. You either do a recovery or you take your hard knockdown. Both of their advantages and disadvantages. You're probably you're gonna do a recovery if you want to get straight back into the action or stop someone doing an infinite combo. Or also, you don't want to be recovering all the time, by the way, because sometimes uh, we can do what is called a recovery reset. And so if I put Bakugo into recovery. Um, I can chase down his recovery and do stuff like this. And because once you recover it resets the damage, I can do this a lot and it like is a really powerful tool. And you can get a lot of damage if you read someone's recovery. Obviously you do a bit more of a combo than I did just then, but you can get a lot of damage if you read someone's recovery. So you know, if you don't want to fall for that, then just take your hard knockdown and they can't get a reset off of that. You just take your invincibility and stuff and you're, you're all good. So yeah, those are the two types of wake ups. And the last term I want to talk about is comebacks and I think everyone knows what this is but I just wanted to talk about it because they're awesome. Comebacks is just when you have very low health and your opponent has a lot of health and you just make all the right reads. Hey, another word that we learned today. You make all the right reads, make all the right decisions, maybe you mix the opponent up, you play very well in neutral, you don't make any wrong decisions, you do everything right, you're doing everything that we've done today. So you've done your neutral well, you've done really good combos, your pressure has been on game so your opponent hasn't been able to punish your attacks. You've used all sorts of cancels to get combos, to make yourself safe, to get your opponent off of you. Um, you've made reads, you've done mix-ups, you've rushed your opponent down or zone them out depending on what, how you like to play. You've known whether things are safe or punishable, like you know all the frame data of all of your moves. So you just make all of the right decisions and do all of the right things, and you manage to do, use that little piece of health and survive and take out your opponent's entire life bar. That is a comeback. And a specific type of comeback when you have basically zero health, like you can barely see the piece of health and your opponent has full health, but you've managed to make that comeback, that is what we call a magic pixel. When you have that one little pixel of health, but you manage to survive. So uh, yeah, that's what comebacks are. And I think I'm going to end the video by showing a few examples of a few comebacks. Some will be mine, some will be other YouTubers. But uh, yeah, I'll end the video with those. So. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope. <clears throat> what did I just say? For wanting this video? Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something first and foremost. Um, I hope this just clarifies a lot of the terms and I hope you guys. Yeah, I hope you learned something and I'm so excited to do my. Um, the tournament that I've, I've been preparing because I'll be definitely using a lot of these terms. So yeah, I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed and enjoy these comebacks. Thanks for watching. <laughs>
機動力に勝るものなし Fucking season, nigga. Fuck is you talking about?